Welcome to Bring Your Brilliance. Are you ready to find and amplify your voice? Looking to be inspired by those who are already out there making it happen? Listen in as we shine a light on those who bring their full, authentic selves to do what they love, make no apologies, and don't try to fit into other people's boxes. With your host, Carla Taylor, who, after years of being inspired by the brilliantly shining people she was meeting, decided others need to hear these stories too. Hello, all of you brilliantly shining people on this brilliantly shining day. This is Carla Taylor, and this is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show here on Inspired Choices Network, and I'm so happy to have you join us for this session today. We are talking, I bet you can't guess, <laughs> if you've been listening to me at all for a while, you know I am a LinkedIn lover. I love LinkedIn. I love everything about LinkedIn. It is something that I've been involved with in lots of different ways over the last several years, in starting out as a career coach and helping people with their LinkedIn profiles and things like that. But it's been exploding with awesomeness in the last a couple of years, and especially this past year, it really has come alive in ways that it never had before, and that's why I keep talking about it. And in fact, that is why I interrupted my regularly scheduled uh, flow of having interviews throughout the month, and then my strategy sessions the first Friday. I'm a adding in an extra strategy session because there's so much going on on LinkedIn. And if you want to know about it, you've got to stay on top of what's happening. And I just had to come and interrupt a regularly scheduled program to bring you some of the latest and greatest awesomeness from what's happening today on LinkedIn. And it is a continually evolving program. So if you're listening to this episode in the future, uh, some of this may still be true. Some of it may have evolved from here. But it is constantly changing and it's a place that you really want to be. So I've said this before, I'll say it again, but if you do business of any kind, if you have a business, if you're in business, if you're an employee of a business, LinkedIn is the business networking platform. It is the place to be. It's the biggest online networking party if you look at it that way. There's a lot of people who don't get that yet who – uh, think of it still as that static resume platform that you only go out to and maybe even just upload your resume to, which don't do that. Don't ever do that. If anybody tells you to attach your resume as a document to LinkedIn, do not do that. That shows that you don't know what you're doing. Uh, so, But it is a place to have a vibrant, alive version of your resume that you put into the LinkedIn format on the profile. And that's the starting point. That's just the very beginning of what you can do. And you do want to have that filled out. So if you've listened to me, like I said before, you've heard me really emphasize the importance of having your profile in order before you do anything else. So that's the place to start if you haven't already. You want to make sure that you have your LinkedIn profile where it should be. So again, today's topic is LinkedIn content creation. So we're going a little bit beyond the basics of LinkedIn. I'm going to touch upon those, but I've had a couple other shows focused on those. So today we're talking about LinkedIn content creation as the best way to get your voice and your message in front of your consumers. And whether you have a business or not, you have consumers of your message. So that's what we're talking about. So right now, LinkedIn is one of the hottest platforms. It is the place to be if you want to get in front of businesses, consumers, and decision makers. It's also where you want to go to connect with like-minded individuals and grow your own personal and professional network. And I'm going to dive into that a little bit more later today as well. Beyond your LinkedIn profile, which should now act as a landing page for you, connecting with others and commenting on others' posts, which is another great way to grow your visibility, you should be creating your own original LinkedIn content. It's a place for you to go and to be blogging, posting pictures, graphics, videos, writing articles. It really is a very alive content creation platform beyond what you might have known it as. There's so much you can do with LinkedIn today. I work as a social media ghostwriter for those of you who want help but don't know how to do it yourself or don't have time to do it yourself and you're busy and you want someone to be creating that content for you. That's one of the services that my business offers with Bring Your Brilliance at bringyourbrilliance.net. 
And I'm also a LinkedIn strategist and personal branding expert that will help you uh, with some DIY tools if you want to do it yourself. So that's at my other website at itstimetobringit.com. Um, and today I'm sharing all kinds of tips, tricks, hacks for creating and growing on LinkedIn. So I'm very excited. I've got a lot of content. I'm going to try to go a little bit slower because <laughs> I know sometimes I tend to go very fast, but there's so much to talk about. Every single one of my shows could be three or four shows, um, and I try to just kind of give you the highlights, but there's just a lot to learn, and it's fun. Like, that's something I've talked about before, too, is don't be intimidated. Just have fun with it. Make everything fun. That's how life should be in general anyway, and the older I get and the more I go on in life and the more I work with lots of different people, I just realize that being Having fun and making it fun and having fun with it and not putting all this pressure on yourself is a big part of really, truly enjoying your life and your work. And, and I talk a lot about work happiness and career happiness. So this is fun, too. And honestly, for me, it's like this giant playground where I get to meet all kinds of cool people. I get to connect with all kinds of cool people. I get to put out all sorts of help content and get some feedback from people of what they like and what they need. And it's literally like going to a playground when I was a kid and just, you know, walking up to anybody really and saying, will you be my friend and starting up this conversation. But before you do that, you know, to use the playground analogy, you want to like be dressed and have your hair combed and look pretty nice <laughs> before you walk up to people. So that's the um, that's the profile part of making sure you're in order and you're in shape and you have something that's compelling to them when you go up and to them virtually online and say, hey, I'd like to be your friend. And I'll talk about how to do that. It's not quite that direct, but it does kind of feel like that once you get the hang of it. Um, so first things first, let's just briefly review the LinkedIn profile in case you haven't gone to the past episodes. I do recommend you go back there for more in depth. But very briefly, if we go over what you need on your LinkedIn profile, of course, you need to have a very nice picture and a compelling picture. So it shouldn't be um, you know, you standing with your back to the camera or, you know, some people trying to be stylistic or whatever. It should be your face looking at the camera, very inviting, like you're looking at a person that you are talking to. So you want to, ha you can have, you know, some different stylized things, but you want to make sure you can see your face clearly. Ideally, you're smiling <laughs> and you're welcoming. And, you know, people are going to see that picture of your face little tiny when you are commenting on things so make sure it's really just your face and zoomed in on that so that when it's tiny people can still kind of see that that's you so think about that when you choose your LinkedIn profile if you can get a great professional picture that's fantastic if you don't have one or you even just prefer a little bit more raw and unfiltered the the cell phones today have amazing cameras again just make sure you've got great lighting and that you take a really good picture that's fully showing your face. So that's the first thing that you want to have for sure on your LinkedIn profile is your picture. If you don't have a picture, don't expect anybody to want to talk to you because that's 101 <laughs> basic. Um, nobody wants to talk to a blank face avatar. They just don't, even if you're the most awesome person on the planet. So beyond your picture, the second thing to focus on is your headline. And that's that little um, two to three blurb kind of right underneath your name that shows up when you go out on LinkedIn and comment on other things. And that's why even if people aren't going directly to your page, which hopefully they will, but even if they don't, they're going to see your little picture and you're going to see your little headline. So if you do nothing else, at least make sure those two things are fantastic. Now, I do recommend you do everything else because, again, if you want people to care about you on LinkedIn, you've got to care about your LinkedIn <laughs> and show that you care by having it fully filled out and putting your best foot forward. So your headline is something that, that you can really play around with and it, it can change. One of the things to make sure you do, though, before you make all these changes is uh, there's a setting on LinkedIn that automatically shares every time you have an update and you can turn that off. So make sure you turn that off while you're playing around with your profile. Then when it's looking great and you're ready for people to see your new profile, then you can turn it on, make one small change, and then everybody will see this update to your profile. And a lot of people who know you will probably come out and take a look at your brand new awesomeness of your LinkedIn profile. But just make sure that when you make, you know, the 20 or 30 or 50 changes, you're not sending out those 
notifications every single time because then people are going to get really mad. Um, so don't do that. <laughs> uh, so your headline, <clears throat> again, it shouldn't be, um, you know, I don't know, uh, tax accountant. Like if you're a tax accountant, that's fine that you're a tax accountant, but it sh that should not be your headline that's just the title of your job. It should be something compelling about you. So what kind of tax accountant are you? What kind of person are you that you bring to your company and your, your people? So you want to have some descriptive words or something that shows that you actually have a personality and you're not just anybody who has that job. If you are looking for a job, do not, I repeat, do not put seeking employment. I don't care if you're seeking employment. You can approach that different ways, and that's a whole different show. But you want people to want to employ you, so what is it that you bring? What is it, I call it your your, your unique brilliance proposition. What's your What's your brilliance? What is it that makes you unique and different and having awesome things to contribute because that's who people are going to want to connect with? So you're leading with your humanness as your headline. You want to talk about, for me, I, I lead with my Bring Your Brilliance radio show because that's something that talks a little bit about me. The, even the title Bring Your Brilliance says something about me and who I am and what I do. And then I get into some of the other things that I do, like I'm a champion, I'm a connector, I'm a cheerleader of others. So I put that in my headline. Uh, and again, personal branding is a whole nother show, but your personal brand isn't what you do. It's who you are, no matter what you're doing. And you happen to show up that way in all of these other things that you might be doing. But what your headline should be is who you are. You can put a little bit about what you do in there, but that should not be the only thing in there. So your headline is who you are. You've got to have a great picture, and you've got to have a great headline, and you've got to have a decently filled out profile before you go out and start playing on LinkedIn in this giant fun playground party that those of us who are content creators are having out there. So behind your head <laughs> on your LinkedIn profile, there's a space for a cover picture. And you want to have a very nice cover picture. And if you don't know what to do, you can even just put like a nice background of something, nature or whatever. But what I recommend is, is you do have something that has something to do with your business or what it is that matters to you. Or if you've ever spoken somewhere, you could have a picture of you speaking. Something that tells more of your story. So if you're still figuring it out, like I said, just put something back there. But you, And that's something that you can change and update as well. When you do your cover photo behind you, make sure to look at it on a mobile phone as well because sometimes it looks weird or something's behind your head in the mobile phone where it isn't on the computer. So take a look at your profile, especially when you put your cover photo out there on a mobile phone. So we're going to go ahead and take our break now. And when we get back, I'm going to finish very briefly talking about the profile and then we're going to jump right into the content creation and what to do and how to have all this fun on LinkedIn. So again, this is Carla Taylor with Bring Your Brilliance. Today we're talking about LinkedIn content creation here on the Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back. We all have a personal brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. What if you knew how to clearly and confidently communicate your value in a compelling way? Tune in to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor to discover the tools, resources, and inspiration you need to get started and keep growing. Are you ready to make your mark? Learn how to bring your brilliance by listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. 
This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor. To join today's conversation, call in the U.S. at 815-880-8255 or Canada at 613-800-8736 or Skype at Inspired Choices Network. Or ask a question or send a comment by email at bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Okay, so it's time to bring your brilliance on LinkedIn. This is Carla Taylor here on the Bring Your Brilliance radio show on Inspired Choices Network. And we are talking today about LinkedIn content creation. So before the break, I was just giving you a little bit of a recap of the basics of your LinkedIn profile and why it's so important to have a great picture and have a great headline and to go ahead and fill out all those different sections as much as you can. And again, it's a work in progress. We don't expect it to be perfect the first time. Just do as much as you can and and you can come back to it. But again, don't put out the updates until you're ready for everyone to see it and then go ahead and make a small change after you say notify my people once the update is there. Um, And that's a great way to just kind of pop up and be top of mind in the people you've already connected with. So now that you have a decent profile, and if you really want more information and tips on profiles, that's something I can help you with. But one of the people that I totally recommend is Judy Fox. She's a great person to follow on LinkedIn. And she has a LinkedIn Like a Fox (laughs) program if you really want to dive deep into creating your LinkedIn profile like a landing page. And that's really what it's become is a place for people to learn about you and your business. And sometimes people just use LinkedIn and don't even have a separate website. Now, that's a whole other topic of conversation, but a lot of website designers even are telling people you really just need a landing page. Just have somebody come out, check that you're legit, and then they're actually playing in this playground of LinkedIn and these other places. So, your website's literally like an island that people have to come out to see. They're just going to pop out there and see if you're there. But really, they're going to spend their time in the city where everybody else is spending time. And right now, the most happening, bustling city in the world is LinkedIn. It's a giant city. It's got over 600 million people in it. And that is expected to grow. LinkedIn's goal is actually 3 billion people across the planet. So that is the city you want to be playing in. And it is growing, 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 growing like crazy. And that's why it's so important to have a presence and be participating on LinkedIn. And one of the best ways to become visible very quickly right now, it really is like the Wild West of opportunity at this moment because just like Facebook kind of had its heyday and it's a bit on the decline, just like Instagram and Twitter were places where people could go viral and really become known, and now there's a lot more algorithms and things. It's a little bit harder than it used to be. But LinkedIn is now the new thing, even though it's been around a while. It is the new content creation place where people are going viral on LinkedIn. And you've heard me say this before if you've listened to my show, but if you haven't, what? <laughs> wow. Yes, people are getting millions of views and going viral on LinkedIn. And so it's the place to be and to be contributing your voice and your content and all the different ways that you might be able to showcase what it is that you do and how you can help people. So we've got you in, you know, you've got some good shape. I've also got a a LinkedIn profile checklist if you want. That's a free resource. So feel free to reach out to me for that. And um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, (laughs) Carla Taylor on LinkedIn and I am happy to send it over to you. So uh, now that you've got your, your profile pretty much in shape, let's talk about what to do from there. So one of the things you probably want to do first is just to find people that are doing great things on LinkedIn. So I've talked about a couple of my favorites are Judy Fox, like I just mentioned. Uh, Michaela Alexis is amazing. She is someone who was one of the very first content creators, one of the first 50 actually, who really started going viral and starting having a big presence on LinkedIn. She's got an amazing story. I've shared a little bit of it before, but right now she's now positioned where she's working directly with LinkedIn and getting a lot of the latest and greatest updates of things that haven't even been released yet. So for sure, if you want to know what's coming and what's happening, Michaela Alexis is wonderful. 
And I will share a little bit of what just came out um, that she just shared, I think, yesterday. So that's kind of where we'll end up today is to share a little bit of those upcoming things. But before we go there, let us talk about how to find people to follow. Um, so one thing is you might just start seeing who your friends are following or other people. You can do searches by all sorts of different things. So you can search for different, uh, if you'd like, to kind of find people in the same or different job role that you're interested in. You can search by that. There's lots and lots of different ways to search on LinkedIn search itself. You can also search by hashtag. So if you want to learn about LinkedIn, you can actually search the hashtag LinkedIn on LinkedIn. And then everybody who's tagging LinkedIn on their content are going to start coming up for you. And then you can find people that you're finding interesting. Specifically, if you're looking for LinkedIn video, there's a lot of people who are starting to tag that content LinkedIn video, hashtag LinkedIn video. So play around with those hashtags and start looking at ones that you can follow. And that's a great way to learn about content creation on LinkedIn. Uh, another favorite of mine, her name is Shay. I gotta make sure I say her last name correctly. Uh, Shay Shines is the name of her thing. So you could, you could actually follow her hashtag Shay Shines. Um, you could also follow Judy Fox's hashtag is um, Fox Rocks, hashtag Fox Rocks. So some of them have kind of their own unique hashtags so you can look up their content specifically. And that's something that you can start doing as well with your own hashtag. So my hashtag, I bet you can't guess, <laughs> is Bring Your Brilliance. So if you want to find everything I've ever put out there on LinkedIn, I pretty much almost always post uh, my hashtag hashtag bring your brilliance and you can actually use your hashtag when you comment on other people's things so if you're not quite ready to jump head first into your own content creation start following some of these content creators and start learning from them and seeing what they do um i'm trying to look up shay's last name shay is like i said someone who uh does really funny videos um she does a lot a lot of videos she actually does that now as her business is to help people create their videos on LinkedIn, but hers are always <clears throat> really, really funny, like hilarious. And they are often commentaries on things, um, even like problems with LinkedIn. <laughs> um, even though she loves it, sometimes she talks about some of the things that might be frustrating, but in a very humorous way. So it's Shay Robottom, R-O-W-B-O-T-T-O-M, and she's fantastic. So absolutely follow her. Um, she actually has uh, 123,000 plus followers. I think Michaela is over 150,000. So these are people who are getting a big following, like I said, on LinkedIn. And so uh, you've got people you want to follow. You want to start adding value even to them by liking, but don't just like. And as if you've been on LinkedIn, you'll see there's actually five different ways to react now. They've kind of followed the lead, Facebook and others that you don't only have like as an option. So there's different ways to react. And a lot of people do react. But what really matters <laughs> to those of us who are content creators and to you as trying to grow your visibility is to comment. And when you comment, again, if you're unsure, you can just say, yay, that was great, or I love this, thank you for sharing, or that sort of thing. But really what you want to do is start adding in your own thoughts because now, people who like those people and are apt to follow other people are going to see you as one of the commenters and now you've become visible and now they're going to see not only your comments, that little picture of you and your headline, the top part of your headline, which is why it's so important to have those ready to go before you start commenting. And they're going to see, wow, that person had a really thoughtful comment that they added to this thought leader I already like. So even if that's all you do at the beginning, you can really start growing your following by commenting on thought leaders' posts, adding value to them. They're going to start to notice you. They'll start interacting with you. You can actually get to know a lot of them. I've personally met a lot of them and become friends with a lot of them. And, and it's not inaccessible at all. Like everybody's out there to help and support everyone else. And of course, there's people who aren't. Of course, you're going to have trolls and people who are going to not necessarily like everything that you do. And I actually was excited because I had my first troll. <laughs> um, 
last week because I was putting out enough content that somebody finally said all these nasty things to me, which I shouldn't have loved, but I actually did love the fact that I had gotten visible enough for someone to not like some of my stuff. And all it did was reinforce to me that there are a lot of people who did like it and it's okay if he doesn't because um, he's not my people. And that's one of the things you really have to get over. There's a lot of confidence um, and courage that comes with sharing on LinkedIn and having a voice. And that's why I encourage you to start smaller and start with finding people that you like, looking at what they do, looking at what you see gets more engagement or less, and start commenting back on them. And that's going to start increasing your own confidence and what to say and what to do, but also people are going to find you compelling. You can also look and see what other people are doing. So not only follow these big thought leaders, but all the people commenting on them, you could start looking at them and thinking, oh, well, that was a thoughtful comment. Maybe I want to reach out to that person. And so you can c connect with those people that way too and start growing your group of cool people you want to hang out with. So that's where it becomes really fun is you start looking for other people's awesome headlines and other people's awesome pictures and things that they're saying that you're like, oh, that's really cool. Oh, Lisa over here said this. I'm going to go connect with Lisa, and I'm going to reach out to her. And I've made lots of friends online by doing it that way, too, before I ever started creating my own content. So get comfortable that way. Get your feet that wet that way. But if you're already like, I am ready to go, Carla, will you stop talking about all these other things and just jump right into the content creation? Yes, I will. So there's lots of content that you can create. There are posts, of course. A lot of people know about those. You can have a very short post. You can have a very long post. You can have a post with a graphic or a picture. You can have a post with um, all sorts of videos. Like, There's a lot of different things that you could add to your posts. And in fact, they've now added in a way to post with a document, which if you save your document as a PDF file, you can actually, people can start scrolling through those documents right there in your post. So that's one of the ways that I have started leveraging my LinkedIn and my content creation is by creating little mini documents with tips. And my hashtag for that is hashtag power three tips. And I give three short, easy tips on different topics. So that's one way to look at how to do a document. It's one way to learn a little bit from me. It's something that you can do is create your own content, your own documents, and have your own hashtag for people to follow that. So I'm going to jump way deeper into all of those things I just mentioned from a content creation standpoint. When we get back, we're getting ready to head to our break. So again, this is Carla Taylor. You are listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show here on Inspired Choices Network. Today we're talking about LinkedIn content creation, and we will be right back. We all have a personal brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. What if you knew how to clearly and confidently communicate your value in a compelling way? Tune in to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor to discover the tools, resources, and inspiration you need to get started and keep growing. Are you ready to make your mark? Learn how to bring your brilliance by listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor. To join today's conversation, call in the U.S. at 815-880-8255 or Canada at 613-800-8736 or Skype at Inspired Choices Network. Or ask a question or send a comment by email at bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hello and welcome back to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show. We are here on Inspired Choices Network. We are talking about LinkedIn content creation. We've talked about your profile. We've talked about your headline. We've talked about going out and finding interesting people to follow and connecting with interesting people, following the interesting people, and becoming one of them yourself by commenting in an interesting way. <laughs> um, and really, don't be afraid to be yourself. Like, you want to bring your personality and not worry so much about being so buttoned up. So even when you do short posts on LinkedIn, you want to talk like you talk. You want to be very conversational and you want to be 
Uh, very short sentences. Don't put a giant paragraph all together. You, if you start watching what other people are doing, they'll have a short sentence, usually a compelling kind of opening line, and then a space paragraph and down to another line, and then kind of make it very easy to read, readable type of posts so that people want to keep going and, and feel like you're just talking to them. The other thing I didn't mention this morning, but um, to make sure when you have your your summary, uh, it should also be <clears throat> not not resume speak where it's third person, but it should be like you're sitting down next to someone or across from someone at a coffee shop and just telling them your story. And again, having that compelling opening line and a compelling version of your story. You can still say some of the th things you might say in an opening uh, summary if you have a really good one that describes you and your skills, but you want to be conversational and use I statements on your LinkedIn profile itself. And the same thing with the post. You want to make sure that that you're having a conversation and, and it really is an online party <laughs> of people coming together or a networking meeting, if you will, of people coming together to to talk and to share and to be personal. And so hopefully if you go to an actual live networking meeting, you're not just going to, you know, troll somebody <laughs> and say something bad. Don't do that, of course. But you're also not going to just um, give them a thumbs up and walk away, right? You're going to actually have a conversation. So treat LinkedIn the same way. You want to start basically making friends. And you know how to do this in real life, most of us anyway. And even if you're not great at it, um, on LinkedIn, you can just start small by having these, these small comments. You really want to champion and support others, and that's also a great way to get noticed as being someone who's super helpful and appreciative of other people's great content. Um, one other thing to mention, if you do have a business, you also want to have a separate LinkedIn page for your business, and again, that's a whole separate topic and, and episode, but do make sure you start also building your LinkedIn page and there's lots of content and, and, and Michaela Alexis, who I've mentioned many times before, she's actually really specializing in what to do with those business pages with LinkedIn. So that's a place to start. Uh, but do have a separate page for your business if you have one. And even if you have that, though, you still want to be commenting as the person. So every business should have a business page, but also everyone in the business should have their own personal pages that they're connecting and communicating and really being human beings because people want to do business with people. They want to be doing business with people they like. <laughs> and if you're hiding behind a business page and you're never being the individual, then people don't, can't get to know you. And so when I work with people, and especially like with the, the, the ghostwriting that I do, I don't just sound all professional and, you know, if it's a realtor, I don't just talk about realty things. I make sure that that person's personality comes alive and they post things that matter to them and start sharing who they are as a person and not just all the business stuff. And it's interesting. I actually just went to a big business conference with Rachel Hollis and and uh, the guy Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank and the guy Mark, I can't think of his last name, from the show The Prophet. And Mark especially, he was very raw and vulnerable and talked a lot almost the entire time, really. He walked around the audience instead of even being up on the stage and he talked about himself as a person and shared his personal stories. And um, Kevin O'Leary kind of said the same thing, like people are sick of being marketed to and they're sick of being sold to and they want to talk to human beings. They want to be treated as a human being. So that's what you're doing online. You're being a human being <laughs> talking to other human beings. And it really is that simple. So quit making it hard. Like truly just keep it simple and go out there and have a conversation with people. So some of the ways you can do that are to... Like I said, you can have short or longer posts. You can uh, start having conversations with people in their comments. Um, another way to be really personal on LinkedIn is to do LinkedIn inbox voice messaging. There's now a feature where you can record your voice, just like leaving a voicemail for someone, but you can do it in the LinkedIn messaging uh, part of, of LinkedIn. And it's a great way to be really personal. You want to leave a fairly short message. Of course, you don't want them to have to listen to one going on and on, but it can be a great way to add a personal touch. 
uh, to connect with people that you either know or don't know. Sometimes that can be really intriguing that you're obviously using a very personal way to reach out to them. And then you could even take it a step further. There's now video messages where you can leave connections with personalized video message in their inbox. So if you're really wanting to impress someone or connect with a, a potential um, prospect or just say hello to somebody in a really unusual way, uh, take a look at some of those features and start playing around with them. Uh, so when we get to the, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of what I want to say next. Uh, so we wanted to go into the types of posts that you can have. So a lot of things that people are doing are these little short posts, and that, that's great. You can also post um, quotes or things that you find interesting. One of the things that I've been noticing is when people post articles, and that's another thing, you can actually go out and post articles on LinkedIn and publish them directly on LinkedIn. And a lot of people are starting to use quotes as their picture for their article because a lot of people then like that quote and maybe do or don't read the article, but that's part of where it starts to grow a lot of likes and engagement is just because the top picture is a really compelling quote. So again, make it your own, like don't reuse other people's graphics and contents, but there's some wonderful programs out there like Canva. I just saw that they're growing like crazy in over 4 billion <laughs> uh, in valuation because they are such a great platform, but there are lots of things that's canva.com, like the word canvas without an S on it, uh, that you could easily create your own graphics that look fantastic. And even if you're doing that to create your own quote, don't go out and just Google search and find other people's images. Make sure it is your own unique image that you are using for that. So you can, um, you can, like I said, create articles, uh, which can be shorter or longer. You can put more than one picture in them. You can have your header picture and you can add other pictures. You can even pull out some of the key quotes from your article. So that's one way to start growing your content library. You can create these mini documents. So if you have tips to share or uh, different things that you want to make a point about or helpful information for your consumers, keep your documents very short. You shouldn't go more than six to ten pages and really if with a cover and an end page where they can find you, you know, just have a short middle part. But you can have these little mini documents that people can click the arrow to flip through right there in your post. So that's another way to grow your own content library. Uh, videos are huge. And that's another thing that are getting <clears throat> a lot of attention, a lot of uh, visibility and, and helping people grow a lot is by having videos. They are much more engaging and come alive. If you do have a video, do invest the time. You can actually find free programs to do it, but do invest the time to put in uh, captions. So most people watch videos on silent, so they're not going to hear what you say. Also make sure that the post with the video is more than just, here's my video. <laughs> um, some people actually use the script from the video in their post. Some people just kind of make a few points about it. You do want to add in a few hashtags when you post things so that people can search it by different ways. <clears throat> and there's a way you can look up hashtags to see what are the most followed and that sort of thing too. But you want to help help people find your content. So by having a video, it's going to be compelling and people are going to notice it in their feed. But do have your captions also or your subtitles in your video so that most people are probably at work or wherever else looking at LinkedIn and don't necessarily want to hear the volume. And of course, you want to have good volume if they are listening. <laughs> uh, so do make sure you have some sort of external microphone if you do create a video. But even if you don't, you can still create great videos. In fact, there's a challenge that I was a part of, and I've done this the last couple of years, and it's called Hashtag 10 Tips 10 Days. And it's really designed to get people comfortable and just even started with creating video on LinkedIn. And so those are usually one to three minutes of some sort of tip for the day. And you do it for 10 days in a row. But you know what, if you miss a day, nobody's probably going to care or notice and you can just do it the next day. I actually missed, I think, two of my days and it ended up taking me 12 days to do my 10 days videos. But the whole point is that you're consistently creating content and you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone to do something that you're not used to doing. 
it can be scary to get on video and it can be really scary to start talking to who knows who's listening to you, but it you learn something every time you do it and it's really uh, you know, you've got the nerves and everything else, but after you do it, you're like, wow, like I did that. And, and you don't have to look perfect and you don't have to be in a perfect background and setting. In fact, I did mine wherever I was. And one of my first tips was start where you are. And I did it on a day where I got completely lost <laughs> and I was walking through downtown Indy and I was completely lost and I had no idea where to go. And I just wanted to stop and rest and get my bearings. And there was a beautiful fountain. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to start my 10 tips, 10 days videos right here, right now. It was something I had been planning to do and putting off. And that's also the biggest thing with any type of content that you're creating is to get 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 going. Just get it done. Like start <laughs> and take some action. And especially your first few posts, probably not a lot of people are going to see those anyway. So just start playing around with it and trying it and not worrying so much about what people think. Like so many people stop themselves because – they're so worried about how they're showing up in this professional setting. But they go to these networking meetings or they, they connect with people in person and they're not always thinking about that. They're just being themselves. So think about who you are when you're just showing up and not in fear and just start talking like that in your video or start talking like that in your posts or start writing articles in your voice. But it doesn't have to be the best. It doesn't have to even be great. It just has to be done <laughs> to get it out there. And you will find that this world of LinkedIn content creators is so supportive. Like everybody wants to see you succeed. Everybody wants more and more people to contribute their voices. Right now, out of those five, 600 million people on LinkedIn, only 1% are content creators right now. Only 1%. So, 99% of people aren't even doing it. So the fact that you're doing it and getting started means you're already ahead of every, you know, all the other 99%. So do it. Just get started. Start with posting a small post. Start with a short video. The 10 tips, 10 days is a fantastic way to start playing around with video. I don't do a ton of video yet outside of that, but it has been such a learning experience to me for me every time I've done things like that. And I'm getting more and more comfortable with being able to just speak directly to people who might want to hear me. The other thing to think about is a lot of people get intimidated by the fact thinking that I'm not an expert. I have to go and get a certification or I have to be positioned in such a way before I can start talking as an expert on whatever the topic is. But the fact of the matter is you know a lot of things and you know a lot of things that have helped you get to where you are today. So think about talking to yourself five years ago and what would that person have needed to know or hear? So start stop worrying about, am I good enough or what do I possibly have to say? And start thinking about, is what can I help somebody who's not quite where I am today to get here? So talk to yourself five years ago. You are an expert on that. You are an expert of how you got from there to here. And you absolutely don't need any other qualification. The other thing is you can be a reporter of content. You can interview other people. You can report what other people are doing and share things that way. So you don't have to be this top thought leader to start sharing awesome content on LinkedIn. So we're going to go ahead and, and stop there, uh, come back with breaks to get into some of the newer features that I promised to share with you when we get back. And again, this is Carla Taylor. You are listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show. Our, con our topic today is LinkedIn content creation here on Inspired Choices Network, and we will be right back. We all have a personal brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. What if you knew how to clearly and confidently communicate your value in a compelling way? Tune in to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor to discover the tools, resources, and inspiration you need to get started and keep growing. Are you ready to make your mark? Learn how to bring your brilliance by listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor. To join today's conversation, call in the U.S. at 815-880-8255 or Canada at 613-800-8736 or Skype at Inspired Choices Network. 
or ask a question or send a comment by email at bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back. This is Carla Taylor. We were just talking about having the confidence and whether or not that you can be a contributor of content on LinkedIn. Like I said, it's wide open in terms of the ability and the space to do it. Only 1% of people right now are, are creating content. And now is the time for you to jump in and not be afraid and just start doing it. So again, this is Carla Taylor. This is the Bring Your Brilliance Radio Show here on Inspired Choices Network. And we're diving into the topic of LinkedIn content creation because there's just so much going on with that right now. And it's now's the time to 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 get in and for your voice to really be heard. So don't be afraid. <laughs> uh, you are an expert of some sort. You've you've gotten yourself to this point in life. And like I said, you can talk to that person who you were five or ten years ago. What would you have wanted to know? What what would do you wish somebody would have taken you aside and told you and said, here's some things to, to do better in life or to do better in this, this role or, or how to grow or how to be whatever. So think about not what do I have to say, but how can I help someone else? So I've talked a lot about Michaela Alexis. She's fantastic. She is one of the top <clears throat> thought leaders about LinkedIn. She is a millennial LinkedIn trainer, and she has lots of great ways to learn from her as well. And one of the things that she talks about for her tips are some scroll stopping secrets. So if you search her up, you can find that. And I'm going to send, uh, I'm going to share her six critical questions to ask yourself before you hit your publish button. So when you're getting ready to publish an update on LinkedIn of a post or even a, an article or anything else that you're doing for content creation, here's six critical questions from Michaela Alexis to ask yourself before you hit that publish button. So the first one is number one, who am I trying to speak to? So again, think about the people that you're trying to reach and who you're trying to help. And really, you can visualize like even one of those people, like pretend you're talking directly to that person. Number two, will this post be valuable to the people that I'm trying to reach? So what kind of value am I bringing? Yes, you need to share your story, but you also need to share it in a valuable way. So here's something that happened to me, or here's something that I've been through, and then here's something I learned or here's some value I can give you that I got out of that. Number three is, does it sound like me? So you want to be yourself. Again, this is human beings connecting to other human beings. So you want to sound like you. Number four, is there any way this update could be misinterpreted, or is it as clear as it could possibly be? So you want to go back through and kind of edit it and make sure you're really saying what you were trying to say, and say it succinctly. You don't have to go on and on. Uh, so just think of the, the easiest, simplest form of what you're trying to say. Number five, am I trying to impress the reader or connect with them? And I bet you can guess which one you should be doing, which, of course, is connecting. You're there to connect. You're not there to impress. You really are there to connect and grow your personal and professional network. So think about it that way instead of being intimidated about what all of these other people might think. There's going to be a lot of people who don't like what you have to say, and that's okay. There's going to be a lot of people in the world who don't like you. That's okay. You don't need to be friends with everyone, but you do need to help the people that you can help. And you are put on this planet for a reason with your own unique gifts and talents and your own unique experiences that you've gone through, and you can help other people that need that help. And if 90% of the rest don't care or don't need it, great. You're still going to help those people that you're helping. And so think about that when you're getting ready, whatever kind of content you're trying to create. Think about the people who really, truly need your help and what they're going to miss out on if you don't share with them. You have a voice and you have something to say, and this is such a great place for you to go out there and use it. So again, we had number one, who am I trying to speak to? Number two, will this post be valuable to the people I'm trying to reach? Number three, does it sound like me? Number four, is there any way it could be misinterpreted or is it as clear as possible? Number five, am I trying to impress the reader or am I connecting with them? And then number six is does this update or this post have both what, which is the story, and the why. Why does it matter to them? 
So again, think about the people that you're connecting with instead of about yourself. Think about how you can help them, and that's where your content comes from. That's where you start getting all kinds of ideas of things that you want to share and help people with instead of just thinking, am I smart enough to talk on this topic? It's really you being helpful. And like I said right before the break, if you don't feel like you know enough yourself, you can go and research and share what other people are saying, just like I did just right now with with Alexa, uh, Michaela's <laughs> um, content, because she is such a great thought leader, and she has been there, done that, and, and I've learned a lot from her. So I want to share some of that learning as well as some of the things that I've done myself. So uh, there's so much more to this. There's a couple more updates I wanted to share um, about some new things that are coming from LinkedIn, and we are already almost at the end of our time. So I'm going to share this very quickly. Uh, the, the, the three things that are coming up are um, that aren't even released yet are LinkedIn events, which means you're going to be able to create and join professional events right there in LinkedIn. So you can invite your connections, manage your event, all the stuff that you can do. If you use Facebook events, I'm assuming it'll be fairly similar. But this is going to be a fantastic tool to start creating even more on LinkedIn. So you heard it here. LinkedIn events are coming. Uh, update number two is they're um, testing a mass actions option for your inbox, so the ability to manage multiple messages. And, um, oh, the other thing is make sure when you first connect with people directly in their inbox, do not be a silly person. Do not come across as a sales pitch. It, you wouldn't hopefully do that in person. So you're connecting and making relationships. When you're connecting with people, you just start talking to them and saying hello and being friendly and asking how you can help them. You are not immediately throwing a sales pitch at them. That's the worst thing you can do when you connect with people. When people do that with me, I know they just truly don't get it. They might be really nice people, but I don't want to connect with them. I am very taken aback. I don't want to start off with a sales pitch, and it doesn't compel me to want to connect with them further. So make sure you're not one of those people, and make sure that you are connecting as a person would and, and build the relationship over time. That's so important when it comes to connecting on LinkedIn. And then number three is um, the new feature is the new LinkedIn Pages feature, which is going to become not just the page for your business, but it's rolling out things like employee notifications, kudos and team moments, um, all sorts of different things that you can do to engage with your own company on LinkedIn as well. So there's going to be all sorts of crazy awesome things happening on LinkedIn. Like I said, it is the place to be. It's the place to watch. It's where you want to be. It's where you want to be a human being <laughs> and be a, a person that other people want to connect to. And if you are being that and looking for that, you're going to find your tribe. You're going to find what I call your high vibe tribe of people who lift you higher and higher that you feel lifted by. And that's when life gets really fun. So find your people. LinkedIn is a fantastic place to do it. Make sure you're also connecting with those people in person as well as online. That's another way to really grow and solidify those connections. Uh, so make sure you're treating this not just as some crazy off to one side online world, but it really is just expanding your world and it's simply a tool to do that. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing and a lot of people are doing in their community is hosting a LinkedIn local event, which is simply bringing people offline into real life and meeting people in real life. And it's so important to grow your relationships organically like you would um, if you're only in real life, but you actually can enhance it by having these online conversations too and have fun with it. You know, you can have these gift wars or, or different ways that you interact back and forth with people and just be a fun person and connect with other fun people and you're going to start seeing opportunities and people everywhere that you want to be around, that you that want to be around you. And that's really how you start growing your network and growing your experience and finding other co-creators and collaborators and people who want to be around you. So again, this is Carla Taylor. This is Bring Your Brilliance here on Inspired Choices Network. Next week, we're going to be talking to the amazing Chiffon Myers and hearing all about what she does with Pretty Pair Brides and, and helping plus-size women and loving yourself. And for now, be bold, be brilliant, be you, and go out there and take action. And Thanks for listening to another episode of Bring Your Brilliance with Carla Taylor. For the latest updates and info on personal branding, please follow and interact with Carla Taylor on LinkedIn. And be sure to visit www.itstimetobringit.com.
Join Carla Taylor every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, keep sharing.